Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm honored to have a constituent of mine testifying today, Andrew Connolly, who served in the 1-133rd Combat Brigade of the Iowa National Guard, also known as part of the Red Bulls. And Andrew served as part of the longest combat deployment of any unit in Iraq with the Iowa National Guard, and he also served in Egypt. So we're delighted to have him here and look forward to your testimony. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, first off, I would like to thank Chairman Stutzman and Ranking Member Braley for holding this important hearing today. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Andrew Connolly. I am here today to advocate for adaptive housing grants for veterans. I currently reside at 2820 Illinois Avenue in Dubuque, Iowa. I served in the United States Army National Guard from, no from November 2000 to August 2007. During my time of service, I completed two tours. The first tour took place in the Sinai Peninsula, Egypt, from May 03 to January of 04. The second tour of duty was a combat mission in the Al Ambar province, Iraq, from October 05 to August of 07. Our mission in Iraq was convoy security. During the 16 months I spent in Iraq, my unit transported goods to most of the uh, Western Allied bases in Iraq. Our largest enemy threats were the improvised explosive devices, or IEDs. I personally encountered many IEDs near my vehicle and experienced one direct hit, which took place on March 9th of 07. The blast report <clears throat> from the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team verified it to be a pressure plate landmine with approximately 15 pounds of PE4. My team and I suffered minor in injuries and concussions from the blast. After completing my tour in Iraq, I immediately returned to work and enrolled in school. I tolerated wear and tear on my body, figuring that the pains and weird feelings would go away. After serving in Iraq, my disability ratings varied from different parts of my body. My back and knees both, uh, both bothered me quite a bit while in Iraq, which is documented in my medical files. A little over a year after my return, I noticed numbness in my right foot. I thought that I had just tweaked something in my back due to the injuries that occurred while overseas. After a couple of uh, months having these irrita or irritating numbness, I consulted with the VA hospital in Iowa City and they ordered an MRI right away. Following the MRI, the neurologist suggested that I come in for a consultation the next week. It was early February of 2009 and I was struck with some devastating news. The, the neurology doctor at the VA closed the door behind him and proceeded to tell me that I had a slow-growing small mass located within my spinal cord and he was 90% sure that it was malignant. So a spinal cord biopsy was scheduled for two weeks later. The results came back positive for cancer and treatment options were offered. At this time I had a million things rushing through my mind. The first being, how long do I have? Next was <clears throat> How am I going to get through this financially? The neurologist reported that the tumor was service connected and most likely contributed to the pain and discomfort that I suffered while on active duty. At the time, I owned a top bottom duplex that was built in 1890. Fortunately, my family and I occupied the lower unit. Unfortunately, it was not handicap accessible. My condition rapidly deteriorated and complicated our family situation. My son Brody was born on July 31st of 08 with a neuro uh, neuromuscular disorder called congenital myasthenic syndrome. This disorder affects all of my son's muscles, thus causing dependence on a ventilator 24 hours a day. He too will need to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. I started radiation and followed up with chemotherapy. I am still taking chemotherapy and probably will until I can no longer tolerate it or I move on. As the year 2009 went on, the right side of my body slowly lost feeling. By the time 2010 came around, my left side began to lose feeling as well. As my body began to dwindle from the nipples down, I investigated military grants for paralyzed veterans. I came across the Specially Adapted ho Adaptive Housing Grant and applied for it. I was denied the grant because I was still able to walk at, at that time. Doctors reported, the doctor's report stated that this type of cancer would leave me paralyzed and no cure existed. I was diagnosed with the grade 2 3 anaplastic astrocytoma cancer of the spine. This still did not qualify me for the grant. My legs started to give out on me and I tripped quite often. 
A wheelchair-bound life was creeping into the picture quite rapidly. My frustration with the VA grew Im immeasurably, and I felt trapped, fighting a losing battle. I was 26, married, and had a beautiful, handicapped child to support. My life spiraled downward, and I fit the grant criteria to a T. Ironically, my minimal ability to walk kept it beyond my grasp. For seven years, military leaders preached to us, prepare, prepare, prepare. This is exactly what I was trying to do. I was hoping to get the grant paperwork started early so that when the time came and a wheelchair became a permanent part of my life, I would be ready. At this time, I was unable to afford a proper handicap accessible house for my family. In April of 2010, I called Ray Zirkelbach, who served with me in both Egypt and Iraq. Ray, and I, Ray, an Iowa House representative in the neighboring county, listened to my story. He too thought something should be done about this situation. He forwarded the email on to Congressman Bruce Braley, who quickly turned around my application paperwork. Within two weeks of co contacting Representative Ray Zirkelbach and Congressman Bruce Braley, I was approved for the grant and a huge weight lifted off of my shoulders. With the grant approved, I was able to build a house that would be suitable for my family. Construction on our, on our new house began on June 21st of 2010, the same time I became wheelchair bound. Life in our duplex during the construction of the new house was quite miserable, but temporarily manageable. In August of 2010, I officially became a paraplegic, losing all use, function, and feeling below the nipples. At this point, the neurologist decided it was time to try to remove as much of the tumor and spinal cord as possible and attempt to prolong my life. The surgery itself went perfectly. However, the surgeons were not able to remove the entire tumor without causing me to become a quadriplegic or having respiratory complications. With paralysis, I fell deeper and, and I felt, or I fell deeper and deeper into depression. The list of tasks that I was able to do around the duplex grew shorter and shorter. I became so reliant on my wife and others to help me accomplish simple tasks. Taking a shower, for instance, became an hour-long duty that required an extra set of hands <coughs> and an awkward plastic bench that offered terrible support. I lost all control of bowel and bladder, which made it impossible for me to use the bathroom in my own apartment. Since the duplex was built in 1890, all the doorways and hallways were narrow and produced a knuckle-rubbing experience every time I moved into a different room. Cooking, doing the dishes, and even maneuvering around the kitchen became very difficult. Life in the duplex was unbearable. Today, I am in my new house. Today, I took a shower by myself and a 5x5 five five roll-in shower with handicap controls. Today, I cooked my own breakfast because I was able to reach all of the ingredients. <clears throat> Today, I was able to watch my son Brody sleeping in his bedroom because I could roll through his doorway with my wheelchair. Today, I am praying for all soldiers and veterans that they may have the support and dignity they deserve without having to jump through hoops or have friends in politics. I am where I am today because I have ad had advocates, not because I will ultimately die young as a result of serving the country I love. Adaptive, uh, adapted housing grant programs, including the temporary residence adaptation program that is specifically extended by this, le this legisla legislation, ensure that our brave soldiers get the assistance they deserve so that they can live as self-sufficiently as possible. Thank you again for holding this hearing. It is my hope that Congress extends the TRA program and continues its support for all adaptive housing grants, grant programs to come. And I am open to any questions you might have. Thank you.